Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing, and please motivate me uh, by giving me stuff to react to. You can find us on Facebook as and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Head there, say hi, we'll say hi back. Check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Subscribe and enjoy the content that we actually put out there. So today I'm going to be reacting to the hardest question ever. I mean, did that. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. I'm telling them about the original sin. That sin is an acquisition. It is not inherited. This is Islam. After reaching a stage, every child is born a Muslim. And if that child dies before the age of discretion, that you can evaluate right and wrong, that child goes to heaven. Whether in the home of a Hindu, a Jew, or an atheist, that child goes to heaven. Every child is a Muslim. After e reaching that age, then whatever the child does, the grown-up fellow, he is responsible for his or her action. Sin is not inherited, it is an acquisition. In brief, that is the Islamic theory of the original sin. It is not inherited. The Christians say it's inherited. We say it is not inherited. So question time. These are all missionaries, Christian missionaries. They're trained. So one guy stands up and says, Mr. Didat, even if this child that was born out of wedlock, means the man and the woman had committed zina, adultery, fornication. Out of marriage, they had sex and they produced this bastard child, even if the child is a bastard child. I said, yes, even if the child is a bastard child. It is no fault of the child. If there is a law, you punish the man and the woman for committing adultery. But the child is innocent. You can't strangle the child because the child is born bastard, can you? No, it's no fault of the child. I said, the child is innocent. That's the answer. So the guy stands up again. He says, Mr. D, that. How can anything good come out of evil? Adultery is evil. Out of that, how can a clean, pure child come out? And my system was, uh, question time, the man asked the question, I'm sitting down and I stand up and I answer the question, and I sit down again. Another guy stands up, asks the question, I stand up to answer. And it took me a little longer to stand up. How can anything good come out of evil? Adultery is evil. How can a pure child come out of that? out of zina. It took me a few seconds longer and it, to me it seems long time. I didn't have the answer. I didn't have the answer. I had the answer. I can speak about physiologically there's nothing wrong with the child. Psychologically there's nothing wrong with the child. Ethically there's nothing wrong with the child. I can speak for an hour on that. But at the end of the hour, the guy can still nod his head and says, Mr. D, Dad, how can anything good come out of evil? Same place. After one hour of exposition of psychology, uh, theology, uh, philosophy, the guy says, no, Mr. D, Dad, how can anything good come out of evil? So I could see an hour's talk and still at the end of it, the guy is not satisfied. That's, that's the difficulty. What am I going to say? So Allah, you know, he gives it to you. If you are working for him, he gives it to you. I didn't have the answer, but it came. I didn't hear anybody talking to me. No Jibril came to me. <laughs> Anytime you hear that Ahmad Dida saying he's hearing voices, you must know Ahmad Dida needs a psychiatrist. <laughs> I'm telling you. I said, look poor fellow, he's going off now. <laughs> Maybe he's taking some Mandrax pills or whatever, what not. <laughs> he's going off. <laughs> then I say, I'm hearing voices. The only voices I hear is your voice when you talk to me. I don't hear any other voices. I didn't hear any voices. But I stood up and I said, you see, eating and talking about the apple, eating an apple in the garden was a great sin. According to you, great sin. For which Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. I said, yes. But in contrast to that, compared to that, killing the only begotten son of God. In a billion years he produced only one. And that son you go and kill him. That's the most heinous crime you can think of. The greatest sin is to kill God's only son. 
which he produced in a billion years, he produced only one, and you're going to kill him. Compared to eating an apple, what do you think of this, killing God's son? It's the most heinous crime you can think of. And yet, out of that murder of the only begotten son of God, came the gift of redemption. Jannah, Rahe Najat. I said, you tell me, how can anything good come out of evil? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> killing God's son? Huh? What an evil compared to eating an apple. If eating an apple is a sin, killing God's only son, shh. And out of that you say came salvation. That's the only way you can go to heaven. You believe that Christ died for your sins. That's what he's telling you. So out of that murder came this. So out of that murder, how can anything good come out? You tell me. Finish. a valid point when it comes to children born out of wedlock how are you going to say this child is sinful because two grand people decided to do whatever they did the child knows nothing that's why at the end of the day and people are more accepting now a long time people would get upset but now I feel like parents grandparents families in, in general are more understanding that a child is innocent. This child didn't ask to be born. This child didn't ask to be here or be born in this family. So we should spare them all the hate, all the criticism, and just let them lead, live a normal life. Because I don't, I don't see why a child should be punished for the parents' sin. Let the parents be dealt with. Although I should ask what happens in such a situation where a child is born out of wedlock and then maybe family members are just upset that maybe this wasn't the right time for you to have this child and they hold that grad for the rest of their lives, you know. And even if maybe you, the parents, pass on or still alive but need help with that child, your relatives that are actually doing well don't want to help because they feel like she didn't have had that child. Isn't the child basically indirectly getting punished for what the parents did? If yes, why do you say so? And if no, why do you say so as well? Otherwise, do I believe sin is inherited? I feel like if you believe in such a thing as I inherited my parents' sins or I'm getting punished because my parents did something, then that's going to be your, re your reality. You're going to be constantly getting punished for things that you don't know they did. Things that you've seen them do. And you're going to be accepting to that. You should want to live a life of peace and say, No, I'm the one breaking this generational case. Just because they didn't do this doesn't mean I shouldn't do it as well. Just because they're punished for this doesn't mean I should suffer for their sins as well. Be the person that says, Nope. This wasn't my dream, I'm going to live a great life. This wasn't my dream, I'm going to live and be successful in this life. I feel like to some point we get to choose what kind of life we live based on our mindsets. But if we're just accepting of everything, funny go there, you go, funny jump off this cliff, you jump. Funny slap your parents, you slap them, funny ignore your parents, you ignore them. Then, um, I don't know. I don't know what kind of reality are you creating for yourself. Some people today are still living saying I'm suffering because of, I mean they're suffering because of their great great parents misdeeds. Why? Why are you doing that to yourself? Clear your mind, think of more positive things and look at life in a different perspective and see how life changes for you. Otherwise, right, I disagree that sin is inherited i really really disagree but let me know what you guys actually think what are your thoughts on what did i have to say and it's actually a good question so what the question is the jockey cracks at the end what good comes from sacrificing someone who did no wrong where's the point in that isn't that a bad deed of course people would beg to differ with what i think what you think what the next person thinks and life goes on. Otherwise, what are your thoughts and why do you think that? If there's something you want me to react to, let me know by dropping the name or the link down below. I'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest. Make sure to give this 
video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video